Dealing with corporate data is essential for large information holders. It is very important to enable swift data exchange and at the same time to keep the data privacy and safety. Rockchain helps companies to collaborate together with a blockchain as an orchestrator and to deal with corporate data without compromising the data privacy. Rockchain wants to provide the distributed global infrastructure for data processing and highly configurable data access rights management and hoping to bridge the gap between the corporate IT and the global blockchain. Today we are talking to Sebastian Jehan, CEO and Rockchain Inventor. Hello Sebastian. Hello, nice to meet you. Can you tell us a little about the project? What's the main mission of the Rockchain? So Rockchain is uh, trying to bridge the gap between the public blockchain and the private networks. We've seen that uh, dealing with private data is not possible yet on public blockchain. On adopting public blockchain for cooperation is difficult because there's no real access right systems. So we are working on those issues. By the way, where does the Rockchain name comes from? So we consider that uh, putting uh, some strategic data on the public blockchain or any decentralized public networks is not possible for companies. Because even if you encrypt the data, you, you get a risk. Uh, besides, those data can be considered as monolithic. So we can see those data silo as rocks. On bridging uh, the gap between the public blockchain and those rocks, made the uh, ideas of giving the technology name uh, Rockchain. Tell us please, why did you choose a blockchain technology and in particular Ethereum smart contracts? Yes, uh, we have to understand that Rockchain is not a blockchain. We are an extension of uh, a public blockchain. Uh, so we need a transaction framework for dealing uh, between actors on the exchanging uh, uh, the access wise with a stronger security uh, on, on those uh, exchanges. So that's why uh, um, we choose uh, uh, one of the best uh, generic uh, virtual machine for public blockchain, which we consider to be Ethereum. What is the difference between Rockchain and other decentralized cloud projects? Yeah, I've seen a lot of decentralized cloud projects like Sonam and IIXEC which are basically a hub of, uh, for distributed computing resources uh, on top of a blockchain. So we are not a hub of um, computation resources. Uh, we are truly a decentralized infrastructure in the sense that the computations are running uh, on the public nodes at the same time and that the result is validated by a consensus. So it looks a little bit like a recent project announced by Vitalik, which is called Plasma, and which is also introducing a compute uh, reduce uh, framework, which is also truly decentralized. So we understand that Rockchain is a completely innovative project. Can you describe us what are the main innovations? So we consider that uh, we are uh, really uh, truly decentralized file systems with access wise uh, orchestrated by the blockchain. So this is an innovation because uh, we are file systems that can be uh, totally oper uh, operated on the internet and where no central storage uh, exists with very thin uh, access wise uh, management on the uh, blockchain. Another innovation is uh, to be able to compute uh, some scripts on top of it in a decentralized uh, infrastructure. Do you see a difference between proof of stake and proof of computation? Yes, uh, when you do a proof of stake, uh, you're staking some tokens uh, in order uh, to prove uh, um, your honesty. So you're pu punished if you're not honest. Proof of computation is something different. It's uh, You need to uh, have a real computation framework that proves that you really executed some scripts, some given scripts. So it means uh, for us, for example, we uh, split the computation steps uh, into uh, some kind of trees, like Merkle trees. And we are able to prove with ashes uh, that the computation has been correctly executed. So people cannot fake the, the execution of a script. Do you know somebody who goes by your way of development? 
Yeah, if we split the blockchain features in uh, several uh, entities, for example, uh, joining corporate networks uh, with a public blockchain, we have initiative, for example, Azure on Microsoft, with uh, doing that, the enterprise smart contracts. So they really are dealing with uh, both uh, uh, data schemas, that's really important in uh, exchanging data uh, from private networks to public networks, and also uh, they are dealing with joining the private networks with the public blockchain. You got also Polkadot, which is created by uh, Gavin Wood, uh, who also created Ethereum uh, virtual machine, which is uh, connecting private blockchain with public blockchain. We can see Polkadot, which is a, a complex infrastructure, as a proxy between uh, the private and the public blockchain. And then recently, a few days ago, Vitalik announced uh, Plasma uh, with uh, Raiden Networks. Uh, which is uh, improving scalability of um, uh, the smart contract and is creating a, a compute uh, reduce, uh, a map reduce framework decentralized. So all those uh, innovations are something in common with Rapture. And we are trying to have a unique infrastructure architecture design uh, to be able to facilitate the genericity for developers on the usage of our tools. So for example, uh, dealing with pri privacy on, uh, well, creating a script that runs on private data is done by uh, JavaScript, which is usually more difficult than that. Yeah. Please describe your further plans, timeline for further steps. Yes, uh, so we are now working on two uh, bricks of our technology. Uh, the generic privacy engine, which is able to compute uh, some scripts on private data without uh, breaking this privacy. And uh, it will be released uh, 10 months after the ICO. We are already benchmarking it. And we announce uh, the first uh, performance results uh, in a few weeks. And then we have this uh, distributed file system, which is also being created. And uh, we are hoping to have it uh, released uh, early next year. But we are able to make a video of our interface uh, before the ICO. When do you plan to make the blockchain infrastructure open sourced? Yeah, it's it needs to be stabilized uh, before being open source. We don't want to introduce uh, bugs too early. So we are planning to release everything in 10 months after the ICO. What would be the advantages for the participants? So we, we have a limited uh, amount, uh, uh, limited supply of rock tokens. And uh, if you believe uh, the public blockchain can address uh, challenges in uh, corporate networks and in uh, usual IT systems, uh, rock token is an opportunity. You gathered a team of professionals. Can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, to, to build such an infrastructure as a rock chain, we need to gather several skills. So we have um, a big data experts that is uh, used to deal with uh, MapReduce frameworks and big data infrastructure. We have a uh, rule engine experts, uh, also a Java expert. Uh, we have a blockchain expert, which is uh, also who have worked with other blockchains and Ethereum also. And we have GoLang experts. So this is a small team, but uh, we are planning to expand uh, this team by creating offices uh, abroad. We are distributed uh, team. So in the process now, we are creating an office in the United States, in Spain, in Tunisia, and also we have an office in France. So we can really create a team of expertise uh, able to meet the challenge of uh, blockchain. Thank you, Sebastian, for the nice talk. What do you think about another interview after the ICO? Yes, it will be my pleasure, thanks. Sebastian, thank you very much for the great interview. Good luck to your project and see you soon. See you soon, bye.